The other thing I want to show you is that a lot of things in Kaizala are likable and commentable. So for example, this conversation that we're having, I can like the conversation. I can actually make a comment on the conversation. And I can come back later and view the comments on this conversation, which doesn't make any sense for a conversation, but it will with action cards. So let's take a look at those. So I'm here in my test group. If I choose this paperclip icon in the bottom left, notice there's two different rows of things that I can send in this conversation. The bottom row are things that you might expect. I can use the camera to take a picture. I can get a photo out of my photo gallery. I can send a video. Uh, I can send a contact from my contact book, or I can attach a document. Now, by the way, I mentioned that Kaizala is designed to work over 2G networks. By default, when you attach some kind of media like this, it will only show up, it will only download when the person's on Wi-Fi. You can change that in your settings if you want to, but that's the default. This top row, though, is the neat part. So these are called action cards, and you can see I've got six on my top row to start off with. There are a lot more I can add, and you can also create your own, or your organization can create action cards. So one of the simplest is the announcement. So I'll send out an announcement by choosing an announcement card. I give it a title, and then I type in what the announcement is about. I'll choose done. Now I can add more things to this card. I can add photos, I can add video, I can add attachments, but I'll leave it like it is and I'll send it. So now in the chat conversation, everyone will see this card and they have the opportunity to like the card. They have the opportunity to comment on the card. They have the opportunity to share the card with other people. Now, if you're in a broadcast group, the only interactions you can have are when the administrators issue action cards like these, and then you can make comments or likes and feedback that way. Some of the other action cards we can use are a let's meet. If we're setting up, let's say, a staff meeting. Let's say we have a staff meeting at 4.55 p.m., because everybody loves staff meetings at the end of the day. We'll save that. We can add an agenda. We can add a place. The nice thing about place is it actually uses your GPS so you can find things near where your phone is. So if we were going to have this at the uh, Sonic drive-in for some reason, we could do that. That would probably make more sense if it's an end-of-the-day meeting. Now the results, people can choose to say yes or no they're coming to the meeting. By default, everybody sees the results. If I check this box, only I will see the results. We'll choose send. And so now this action card is out there in the chat. So if I want to see the responses, I can click on the card, and you can see I see one person responded, and they said, no. Who was that? Well, that was Aaron. Apparently, Aaron doesn't want an end-of-the-day meeting at Sonic. Let's look at some of our other cards. Another great one is the quick poll. So we could say, for example, so I ask a question. I give it some options. I can give it an expiration date. Again, response is visible to me. I'll choose done, and I'll send. So this is a great way to poll your team about any kind of situation. When should we meet? What color should our new logo be? What should we have for lunch? Which slogan should we choose? Uh, where should we meet? All of that sort of thing. You can see we already have one vote for tacos. Uh, and this kind of action card is so powerful and so popular that these have now been integrated into Microsoft Teams. You can use this sort of action card in Microsoft Teams. Some of the other action cards, uh, photo with location. This is very helpful if you have field employees and you want to verify they actually are where they're supposed to be. So if I was working for someone and I'm supposed to be at a certain customer's house, maybe I ask them to take a picture of the mailbox when they arrive. So I can go to photo with location. I'll take a picture of the mailbox, which in this case is a keyboard. I'll hit the checkbox. And notice now it's picking my location from the GPS. I can choose a different place because sometimes it's not exact, but in this case I'll choose share. So now everybody in this group knows that I was at this location at 2.52 p.m. There's some additional action cards we can get to in the add more section, and there's a lot of really creative ones in here, so it's a good idea to scroll through and see what they can do to understand where they might fit with your project and workflow. So that's the Kaizala app. There's a couple of things you can do with Kaizala on a PC. So let's look at those real quick. 
If I'm in Office 365, you'll notice a Kaizala app if you have it enabled for your organization. If I choose that, what I'm actually going to go to is the Kaizala Management Portal. And this is where I can create groups for my organization. What's nice is I can copy existing groups. So if I have a team or an Office 365 group that already has a set of people and I want to have a Kaizala group of the same people, I can do that from here. There's some good training videos here on how all of this works because this is more than we can get into in this lesson. I want to point out two other things we can do though. One, there's an analytics section where we can go and see how Kaizala is being used across our organization. Now in our case, we're just getting started with it, so there won't be much here, but if I wanted to see usage trends, for example. So you can see I only have one day of data, but you can see how this might be useful in an adoption strategy where you want to see how it's being picked up across your organization. The other thing is there is a way to use Kaizala from your PC or your Mac, and it's this Kaizala web app. However, it's still going through your phone. So the first time you click on this, it's going to ask you to enter your phone number. It's going to send a code to your Kaizala app to verify that you are who you say you are. And so here you see those same chats that I've been in. Here's my test group with all those same cards that we've had. There's a lot of things I can't do from here, including making audio and video calls. A lot of features don't work from here. And this requires that my phone be nearby, be turned on, be on the same Wi-Fi network, uh, and also have the Kaizala app, because this is still communicating through my phone. The web app is talking to my phone. My phone is then talking to the Kaizala network. But it is a way, if you're at your work PC and you want to be in your Kaizala chats, it is a way you can do it. So the bottom line is, Kaizala is a pretty innovative, very simple, very easy to use communications app. It's fantastic for companies that have a field workforce where you're working with people that might not have email addresses, might not want to give you their email addresses, especially if it's kind of a transient workforce, temporary workers. If you have people working in rural areas, uh, it's great for that. It's also good if you notice that a lot of your uh, employees, a lot of your team are using uh, off the record type apps like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. This is a way to give them an app that's very similar, that's part of the Office 365 ecosystem, so it has all of the security and controls you would expect from an Office 365 app, but is also just as simple to use and just as powerful as what they're used to. So take a look at Microsoft Kaizala.